welcome. When I say I go, you say I may. I go. I go. This call and response from Ghana roughly translates as, are you listening and you have my attention? So I ask one more time, ah, go? Amen. I've been using this call and response and training workshops around the world, not just to grab attention, but to create a custom that builds social bonds. You see, I believe that community is more than a geographic phenomenon. A community can exist anywhere, because it has shared values, norms, customs, and an identity. But the healthiest have something called common unity. We here, we are a community, right? A community that values knowledge and whose identity revolves around the sharing of big ideas. And together, we just built a little bit of common unity. So my career in community health began over 15 years ago as a US Peace Corps volunteer in West Africa. And since then, it's taken me across East and Southern Africa to the Caribbean and back home here to the United States. Simply put, the Peace Corps' goals are to do good, to bring the US to the world, and to bring the world back home. Now, while my career has afforded me the opportunity to fulfill these first two goals, it's the third goal that's been nagging me for some time now. You see, those closest to me have learned about and they've even visited the places where I've worked, but I believe the third goal is asking just a little bit more of me. So today, I'd like to take you on a journey to Africa and to the Caribbean to learn how to build community. So let's first uh, begin our journey in West Africa. Aminu lives in Burkina Faso and she sells onions to earn a living. Her children regularly suffer from diarrheal disease and they can't attend school because they just simply cannot afford it. Not only this, but Aminu and her husband are socially isolated. They go to farm, go to market to sell their onions, and return home each day. They have nobody to help them pay for their health care costs, to expand their farm or their business, or just to offer a helping hand around the house. They are of the community, but they're not part of the community. Now, even though Aminu lives halfway around the world, I'm willing to bet that you know somebody just like her in your own community, but the only difference is the context. But they all lack common unity. So what exactly do I mean by common unity? Well, it's the recognition that the fate of each individual is tied to that of the wider community. Common unity is when a neighbor sees another struggling and offers a helping hand. It's when a problem needs to be solved and everyone comes together to find a solution. Common unity is the glue that binds us to one another, giving us a common sense of purpose and belonging. Now, I believe that a community ceases to be without common unity. Otherwise, it's just a whole bunch of individuals living together in the same place. The English poet John Donne wrote, no man is an island entire of itself. Each is a part of the continent. Now, South Africans have a word for this, and it's called Ubuntu, or I am because we are. Archbishop Desmond Tutu calls Ubuntu the essence of being human. An individual ceases to exist in isolation because his or her well-being is tied to the well-being of those around them. In other words, no man is an island. We need common unity, not just for the social support that it offers us, but to solve problems that are greater than ourselves. But unfortunately, somewhere along the way, many communities lost their common unity, and as a result, their ability to fix themselves. But why? Well, the answer to that question is a TED Talk all on its own. So please forgive me if I paint with broad brushstrokes. The most commonly cited re reason is modernization. The time we used to spend together has been replaced with other activities. Think television, smartphones and social media, instant meals. There's also dependencies that have been created by years of colonialism, institutionalized racism, and poorly designed development strategies. So, when communities are told that they cannot fix their own situation 
through both the actions and the words of those that want to help them, it's no surprise that the response is to wait with hands outstretched. So right now, I hope you're asking yourself the question, well, can we fix the situation? And the answer is yes. My time in Southern Africa afforded me the opportunity to work with a strategy called Community Health Clubs, which successfully recreates common unities. So take a, uh, Community Health Clubs are grassroots organizations dedicated to community health and development. They were developed by the Zimbabwe head organization in the mid-1990s. With the trust that is built as members learn together and the confidence that they gain as they solve problems, the club becomes a vehicle for wider social improvements. So take a moment and think about the clubs that you've been a member of in the past or maybe you're a member of now. Maybe a chess club, a book club, or maybe even a glee club from high school. I, I know there's a couple of you out there. What do these clubs all have in common? Well, I can guarantee you that they have regular meetings, they have a purpose, they have leadership, and they have an identity. And community health clubs are no different. These are the essential ingredients to build common unity. Community health clubs have weekly meetings that are fun and exciting, and members agree to meet for up to six months. I like to think of the club as a beaded necklace. Now what happens if one of these beads breaks? Well, the whole necklace falls apart. So if members miss a meeting, they not only miss out on the vital information that's being shared that day, but they also risk breaking the delicate thread of common unity that's being forged. And they're able to maintain their membership over such an extended period of time because the meetings use dramas, songs, and dancing that creates an environment that is so exciting and so contagious that new people can't help but join them and old members can't help but return time and time again. Now this club structure is reinforced by the mission. In developing countries, our mission is typically water, sanitation, and hygiene, or WASH. And that's because WASH affects everyone. We must drink water, we should wash our hands, and as I'm now teaching my two-year-old son, everybody poops. And where I choose to poop, not only affects my health, but the health of those around me. Because if I choose to poop right here, the flies that will land on my feces will not discriminate as to where they go next. Wash is also relatively low risk and easy. Because if we cannot talk about shit, then it's no way that we can talk about more complicated and socially charged problems like sex. The club structure and the mission breeds authentic leadership. Community health clubs are led by natural leaders. These are people who have always lived in these communities, but they only emerge with the right structure and the mission. They are people like Marie and Jude from Haiti, who traveled to the Dominican Republic on their own dime to get trained and went back to Port-au-Prince and started community health clubs without any financial or technical support from me. They intrinsically knew what community health clubs could do, and their passion for their communities is so contagious, people cannot help but join them. And part of their success is the creation of a social identity. Community health clubs create and reinforce their social identity through aspirational names, slogans, and songs. In South Africa, there's Club Bulebezwe, or Beauty of the Nation. In Haiti, there's club men on some, hands together. The club slogan is meant to be called in call and response at the beginning and the end of each club meeting. And these are, in fact, mission statements. Salut total, total health. Santé les richesses, health is wealth. And this identity and the songs are a powerful reinforcement of this social identity. But don't take my word for it. Have a listen for yourself. Let 
Yeah, please, clap for them. So to date, over 3,000 clubs benefiting 1.5 million people have been formed across 11 countries in Africa, two countries in the Caribbean, and one in Asia. <clears throat> And I've been fortunate enough to help form and work with clubs in South Africa, Zimbabwe, the Dominican Republic, Burkina Faso, and Haiti. And to witness what is possible when common unity is recreated and communities start down their own path towards health and development. So let's first return to West Africa and check in on Aminu. Shortly after the clubs were forced firmed in her, co her community, the leader of her local club approached her and encouraged her to attend the next meeting. That week, they were talking about hand washing, a practice that she and her family rarely did before, and she was immediately hooked. Six months later, she returned to thank that leader for transforming the lives of her and her family. Her children no longer suffered from diarrheal disease. She was now using the, sale, the income from her onion sales to not, buy, not only buy more nutritious foods for her children, but to send them to school for the first time. And her friends had begun making and selling soap that they themselves created. Now, if Aminu represents the individual success, then the clubs in Zimbabwe represent the collective. Four years after these first clubs were created, they had transitioned from WASH to infrastructure to social support and income generating projects that they themselves designed and implemented. But most excitingly was the leadership of four clubs who leveraged the common unity that they had created to build this community center, which was their vision for collective development. And then, 10 years later, when cholera was sweeping across the country, rather than sit back and wait for the international community to save them, as most communities had chosen to do, these clubs re-energized their membership, revisited their WASH education, and in the words of one district health officer, cholera went around them like water around a rock. And then there's Haiti, a country where common unity has been eroded by years of poor governance, population displacements, and the catastrophic earthquake of 2010. There's a traditional proverb that captures the prevailing attitude of many Haitian communities, and it says, Zafé Cabrit, Pas zafé mouton. The business of the goat is not the business of the sheep. What I do is my business and is of no concern to you. However, in just three short years, the community health clubs in Port-au-Prince have created a rapidly growing social movement led by those amazing natural leaders that I had just introduced you to, and they are rolling back the dependencies that have been created. Part of this movement's success is its social identity, which was born from its slogan, Zafé Cabrit, c'est Zafé Mouton. The business of the goat is the business of the sheep. The leaders of this movement smartly seized upon and altered this traditional proverb that every man, woman, and child in this island country knows so as to better reflect a new reality for Haiti. Now, this decline or lack of common unity does not just affect communities over there. It affects communities right here in Texas. In the colonias of the Rio Grande Valley, where people living in informal settlements are ignored, and as a result have little impetus to advocate for social change of their own. Or the low-income communities that pepper South, East, and West San Antonio, where gangs control many neighborhoods and the population suffers disproportionately from diabetes. The only difference is these communities directly impact our lives. These are the communities that will continue to increase our healthcare costs and become the reservoirs for novel diseases like Zika virus. So two years ago, after a conference where I was presenting, I was approached by a faith leader from a South San Antonio community. He shared a story of the decline of common unity in his community and how that decline had impacted the health and well-being of his congregation. And he asked me if I thought community health clubs could be as transformative here as they had been overseas. Now, even though a health club has never been created here in the United States, I immediately responded yes, 
Because if we can succeed in South Africa, in Haiti, in communities that are so much more complicated due to overwhelming poverty and social conflict, we can definitely succeed right here in our own backyard. I'm really excited. I'm finally going to fulfill Peace Corps' third goal, and there's a small piece of Africa coming to San Antonio. I believe, thank you. I believe in the power of people and our ability to use collective action to solve problems that are greater than ourselves. Take a moment and think about your community. How could you use common unity to create positive change where you live? And remember, I am because we are. And together, we can solve anything. So please indulge me one last time and raise your voice in solidarity with the clubs around the world and say, Zafé Cabrit, c'est Zafé Mouton. So now it's your turn. Zafé Cabrit, c'est Zafé Mouton. One more time with some passion. Zafé Cabrit, c'est Zafé Mouton. Feels good, doesn't it? Welcome to the club. Thank you. <laughs>